certainly when it comes to finances, you know, consumers do um, believe that bigger is better and that institutions that have been around for a long time and have withstood the test of time, that they, they've earned that trust of, of doing your banking and putting your, your money there. Um, but it doesn't mean that, that trust is the only criteria when it comes to deciding whether to continue working with, with a business. And so I think the incumbents need to make sure that they continually invest in that trust, but also invest in convenience, invest in innovation, invest in providing new valuable products and services that cater to the needs of, of, a, of a rapidly changing customer base. I think what we're seeing with the robo-advisors starting to employ more and more human advisors, it just underscores the importance of that trusted human relationship. I mean, financial services, for a lot of clients, it's, it's, it's intimidating, it's scary, it's something where they really feel like they don't have um, a good sense of, of domain expertise, even when they're doing their own research. And so it helps to have that trusted guide to go through these really big life decisions. And I think we see that. We saw this in the 90s with the, the first rise of the online brokerages. So you look at an E-Trade or you look at Schwab, you look at Vanguard. All of these companies started off with the promise of online and call center only, but they all now have, have uh, assigned human advisors as well. And so I think we're just seeing the same um, incarnation of that. You think about um, not only the transactional pieces, which can be automated, and looking at the reporting perspective, you know, being able to pull up your account and see an aggregate view of your wealth. Certainly that can be um, aided with technology. But there's also ways, you know, in this predictive world, and we would talk about moments of truth, to listen to what's being shared on social networks and other mediums, and to be able to funnel those insights to financial advisors at the right moment so that they can reach out when it matters most. I think the unfortunate reality in a lot of banks is that compliance has been used as an excuse to not do anything. And that's why banks, for, for as important of, as, of an industry as it is, they've fallen behind when it comes to technology and innovation and keeping up with, you know, don't even, let's not even talk about exceeding, but keeping up with client expectations. And this has to change. I think the FinTech challengers are proving that, you know, compliance can't be used as an excuse. And in many cases, there, there's shadow banking, there are ways that they get around it. It all comes down to culture and what an institution, what, it, what a firm values. I mean, without a clear agenda of embracing innovation and digital, it's not going to happen because you have, it's an uphill battle in many regards. And you need to have that clear business case in order to justify the investment that's required to address the compliance concerns. So I think culture is incredibly important. It starts at the top, but it can't end there. And in order for digital innovation to succeed, it can't be a single person's job. It can't be a single team. You can't delegate innovation to an innovation team or social strategy to a social team. Social and digital and innovation have to be owned by the CEO, every single person on the management team, and really across the board in order for anything to happen. It, everything has to align, and it starts with having the right cultural values. I think the biggest opportunity ahead is to truly operationalize omnichannel. Now everyone talks about omnichannel, but in most institutions, it's not really omnichannel. It's either it's either or. You know, they'll have a traditional, very low tech or no tech advisor organization, and then they might have a completely separate channel for e-commerce, do it yourself. But rarely do these worlds seamlessly intersect. And I think that's that's a challenge. Is we need to integrate these two worlds so that from a from a client perspective. It's seamless, whether they're talking to someone face to face, whether they're calling into your call center, whether they're looking on their mobile app or logging in online. And then from the advisor's perspective, they also have the full set of technologies at their disposal to be able to see what the client sees and more so that they can really be a value add on top of anything that the client might do self-service.